Hello, 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 and thank you for tuning on to another episode of our Scripture Breakdown Ministry. My name is David Abraham, and our scripture for today comes from Psalms 9, verses 11 to 15. And it reads, Sing praises to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Declare his deeds among the people. When he avenges blood, he remembers them. He does not forget the cry of the humble. Have mercy on me, O Lord. Consider my trouble from those who hate me. You who lift me up from the gates of death. That I may tell of all your praise in the gates of the daughters of Zion. I will rejoice in your salvation. I repeat, sing praises to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Declare his deeds among the people. When he avenges blood, he remembers them. He does not forget the cry of the humble. Have mercy on me, O Lord. Consider my trouble from those who hate me. You will lift me up from the gates of death, that I may tell of your praise in the gates of the daughter of Zion. I will rejoice in your salvation. The nations have sunk down in the pit which they made, in the net which they hid their own food is caught. Now, I want to divide the scripture into four parts. Five parts, sorry. And the first part says, sing praises to the Lord who dwells in Zion, declare his deeds among the people. Now, um, before I go ahead, I'd like to um, reiterate about um, Sorry, I'd like to give a brief um, synopsis of what this psalm is about. So this psalm is about a thanksgiving of David for the righteous judgment of God. Now, David had cried out to God. David had complained to God. David had lamented to God about his enemies in a particular situation at that time. And God had meted out a righteous judgment on his enemies and um, David here was a showing appreciation I was sort of reiterating on the characteristics of God and the things God will do for those he loves so here he says sing praises to the Lord who dwells in Zion declare his deeds among the people Sing praises to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Declare his deeds among the people. So here, David was beckoning. David was bellowing. David was yelling. David was yelling in a good way. He was rejoicing. Now, that is the word. He, in, he was, he was um, a joyful happiness. He was, he was rejoicing and saying, sing praises. Because David had experienced the works of God. God's hands. David had experienced several multiple a multitude of testimonies in the, in the hands of God. So he said, sing praises to the Lord. Here was the righteous judgment of God, which, as I said earlier, there was contentment in the heart of David for the righteous judgment of God. Um, here. So he said, sing praises to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Now, the Lord that dwells in Zion is um, Zion, as we know, is Mount Sion in Jerusalem. So he was chained eventually to Zion. So Zion, um, in the modern day Zion, is the churches. The modern day Zion could be your, your, your place of worship, your little altar of worship. So the modern day Zion, particularly, is the churches. So he's here, he says, sing praises to the Lord who dwells in Zion. That's Mount Sion at that time. Sing praises to that Lord, that 
is the God of Abraham, the God of the, the ancestors of David, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the I am that I am, the King of Kings, the ubiquitous God, the God of all flesh, the one that there is nothing to hard for. So he said, sing praises to the Lord who dwells in Mount Zion. Mount Zion. Declare his deeds among the people. Now, declaration of the deeds of God is giving testimonies. Declaration of the deeds of God is a complete and total acceptance of your body, spirit, and soul that God is the doer, that God is the, the mastermind behind a particular sort of promotion, a particular sort of exaltation, a particular sort of blessing, a particular sort of an upliftment that came into your life at one point in time. So he said, De declare his deeds among the people. So David was declaring the deeds of God among his people because David had been liberated from, from a certain um, kind of oppression. He had been liberated by the, the, the vengeance and the righteous judgment of God. So he said, when he avenges blood, he remembers them. He does not forget the cry of the humble. So here David had experienced the righteous men of God, of which there was death. Unfortunately, there was death involved of his enemies. So he said, when he avenges blood, he remembers them. That's, he remembers the humble. So the humble generally are those that humble themselves before God. The, the, the humble generally are, are those who are under the sonship and daughterhood of the living God. So the humble, so he does not forget the cry of the humble. So David was given an he was provincial giving himself an example. He had, he had cried several times up to God. He had lamented all up to God. He had sought refuge in God. He had sought vindication in the sight of God. He has sought a, a, fair, a fair judgment. He has sought justness in the sight of God. And ultimately, he has sought righteous judgment of God in the sight of God. And God came to his rescue. So here he was jubilant. Here he was rejoicing. Here he was happy. Here he was contented of what God had done for him. So he said, sing praises to the Lord who dwells in Zion. That there are many lords, but that Lord that dwells in Zion, in Zion, sorry, that Zion is that Lord who he wants you to sing praises. Come and join me and sing praises to that God. Because that God is the God that has shown me succor. That God is a God that has shown me comfort, that has shown me peace, that has avenged um, um, for my enemies, that has shown me relief from the plot and the plans of my enemies. Then the, 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 the third bit says, Have mercy on me, O Lord. Consider my trouble from those who hate me. Now, David had um, many adversaries, and the adversaries hated him. And very sad, they hated him for no just reason. Now, the reason why your adversaries will hate you is because there is something about you. There is um, something about your persona. There's something about your future. There's something about your yourself as, a, as, as, as an individual. There's something about your aura that sort of brings a sort of threat to their existence. Or well, eventually they want to be like you. So David had adversaries and said, and he, and, and he, said, um, he said, have mercy on me, consider my trouble from those who hate me. So consider my trouble, vindicate me, consider them. Does look into my matter, look into the situation that is giving me sleepless nights, look into the situation that is giving me heart troubles, look into the situation that is oppressive in nature in my life. So he said, Consider my trouble from those who hate me, you who lift me up from the gate of death. So God saved David from death, God removed him from the valley of the shadow of death. Although he said, he will fear no evil, according to the book of Psalm 23, 
they fear no evil, God still lifted him from the valley of death. That means there was no fear, there was faith. So God needed his right hand, or rather God used his right hand to lift him up from that position. They said that I may tell of your praise in the gates of the daughter of Zion. So here it speaks about the congregation, the daughter of Zion, the congregation of Zion. So he will tell of the praise, he will testify in praise, he will testify in sermons, he will testify in speaking, he will testify in preaching, he will testify in telling of the good works of God to the, door, to the gates of the daughter of Zion. That means in the congregation, in the sanctuary, or the assembly of the daughters of Zion. He said, I will rejoice in your salvation. Now salvation is being saved. So he rejoiced in the fact that God had delivered him. God has shown him salvation. God has shown him succor. God has shown him goodness. God has shown him mercifulness. God has shown him loving kindness. God has shown him his protection at every point in time in this particular situation. Then he said, the nation have sunk down in the pit which they made in the net with the heat. Their own foot is caught. I repeat, the nations have sunk down in the pit which they made in the net which they heat. Their own foot is caught. Now that was the vengeance of God. That was the annihilation of the enemy and destruction of his enemies of God. Now God again stands on the righteous, righteous judgment to make that out. So it's like they dug a pit for him. The nets that they set, they fell into it. They dug a pit for him, but fell into it themselves. In error, God pushed them to fall into the pit they dug for him. So God was very um, protective of David at this point in time. God went with his righteous judgment to go forth and be able to avenge on and meta vengeance on his enemies. Then here he says, the nations, he says, the Lord is known by the judgment he executes. The wicked is snared in the work of their own hands. The Lord is known by the judgment he executes. The wicked is snared in the works of his own hands. So God, here he's saying, the Lord is known by the judgment he executes. So when judge, when the wrath of God comes, everybody knows that it can only be God that did it. When the righteous judgment of God is executed, is manifested, people, all the people around, both those that are oppressors and those that are evildoers and those that are troublemakers and those that are the only observers, the onlookers, and even including those that are the oppressed, will know that it can only be God that did it. Now, example is, is um, in the book of Exodus, the Ten Commandments, when Moses went back to Egypt and said, let my people go. Now, the Pharaoh, God, God, uh, according to the book um, of Exodus, God tightened, God stiffened Pharaoh's neck. God stiffened his heart, strength, um, um, made his heart like a heart of stone so that he wouldn't heed to the words of Moses. Now that is because God wanted to deal with, with them. God wanted to avenge for the 400 years of slavery that they had put his children under. So God stiffened the neck of Pharaoh and Pharaoh refused to let his people go. And the plagues from plague one on to two, on to three, up until ten plagues, where the first sons of the Egyptians 
began to die. And guess what? After Moses, after God released, after um, uh, Pharaoh, sorry, released the Israelites, he went after them. God stiffened his neck again and he went after them. And his army, army of the Israel, of the Egyptians, all perished in the Red Sea. Now that was an equal and matching righteousness of God for what they had, um, the, the Israelites had gone through for 400 years. That was vengeance of God. So he said, the Lord knows, the Lord is known by his judgment. So everybody knows when, when God shows his loving kindness, when God performs a miracle, a miracle that is outstanding, a miracle that you can't comprehend, a miracle that is beyond the human comprehension, when God performs that miracle, everybody knows his good. Similarly, when God performs his wrath or vengeance in a situation, everybody knows that it is the hand of God. So the Lord is known by the judgment he executes. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. The wicked is caught in the work of his own hands. So God puts that spirit of error. As they are, they are planning, God puts the spirit of error. So they are snared in the work of their own hands. They dig a pit and they fall into it. They set a trap and they fall into that same trap. Because God wants to show you based on the righteous judgment of God, based on the loving kindness of God for his sons and daughters, for his people, for his children. He puts in the spirit of error and the wicked is snared in the works of his hands. Now, I want to pray that God is able to expand our minds on his word, that God is able to give us more revelational knowledge on his word, that God is able to help us and give us that grace to be able to come to him, that grace to be able to present our case before him, even if we want to put God to a test, to be able to showcase himself that is God, that we present our case through days in a, with a clean heart and with an open mind we present our case to God that God has no option than to come to our rescue and we'll be able to see the right hand of God do valiantly in the tents of the righteous right hand of God will perform ex extremely impressive in the right hand in the tents of the righteous all is asked through Jesus Christ, our Lord, I thank you so much for listening. God bless. God bless in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.